the view is still there. Today I see much more uh, ships on the river, which are hard to see with this camera. Uh, yesterday went to uh, Mike and uh, cocktail party. It, it was great except that right before, like around 6 o'clock, it started raining like crazy. And the cocktail party was at the B&H Photo and Audio, which is just, I don't know, I can see it from my window here at New Yorker Hotel. <laughs> I was like <laughs> all wet, but it was, you know, interesting. Pretty much like it was open store, but only open to the people that, you know, signed up for this uh, cocktail party. So like free beer, free wine, uh, free snacks, and there were... Uh, guys from it was a Nikon party right so there were guys from uh, Nikon from the company over there to answer questions and so the floor was open we could look at all the cameras not just Nikon but it was like uh, the store was open but only for the members of this collective and today I spent the morning like the first part of the day at the um, at the conference uh, the, on the second floor of the hotel so uh, two guys were speaking that were really interesting one was a, a dance photographer basically he started in street photography in New York or oh, I think actually Chicago Illinois and originally he's from Peru I'm trying to find his uh, yeah Omar his name is Omar Robles he moved to Chicago, started doing street photography, and then he came up with this idea of shooting, of taking pictures of himself, doing various, you know, interesting poses in some interesting places. And then he said when he felt he was uh, too old to do them, he started outsourcing. And he came up with this cool idea of uh, using uh, ballet dancers. And that's what he does. He just uses, uh, you know, beautiful, uh, trained, ballet dancers just basically puts them somewhere in the street like in the traffic or he just finds uh, interesting spots you know so that's his that's his thing and that's what he does and the interesting thing about that was that in the end I'm always interested in the gear aspect uh, and he said he just uses uh, Fuji Fujifilm um, Pro 2 X Pro 2 basically a mirrorless uh, camera with a bunch of uh, prime lenses. Basically, his camera is not that expensive. And I actually looked at it, but it's, it looks like an old film camera. Uh, but his lenses, the lenses he uses with a very you know F, low F number, so very expen expensive lenses. So the lenses cost more than the camera, but the results were great. The results on he showed us on the screen looked professional. And so this guy was Omar, and the other guy was I wanted to mention this guy. Uh, because I'm not planning to do any dance photography, but this other guy, he's pretty famous, I think. His uh, name was uh, Jay Dickman, J J A Y J Dickman. He has a photography business. Uh, I think it's jdickman.net is his website. This guy, that's kind of photographs. You know, I want to be able to uh, to make. He was a newspaper reporter for many years. Uh, shot. Uh, sports professionally like baseball you know so he's trained as a as a newspaper photographer you know like he shows you pictures you can see a story in the picture you know it's like very interesting and not just like a picture of a tree or something but like it's so complex you know like basically like a professional you know newspaper or magazine work and then he started traveling and he's he was like in all these war zones and he got actually a Pulitzer Prize, Jay Dickman. So that's why I, that's why I mean that he's uh, famous. And now he works for, he often does assignments for uh, National Geographic. But this guy, he was, you know, so entertaining and he was talking uh, like the way he, you know, uh, does the presentation was very interesting. And you can see that this guy, he's like probably 60, 65 years old. He's still in love with photography. Uh, and the pictures were amazing and so in the end he ran out of time and he says if somebody wants to ask me questions let's you know get out of the hole so I was like the first <laughs> and of course my question was <laughs> what what do you shoot with because the picture 
were look, the pictures looked amazing even on a huge screen like there were two projectors there and this guy the second surprise of the day I thought he would say something like you know D4s or I don't know one DX or something like six gram camera he said he's using a micro four thirds and his weapon of choice is Olympus and I looked up the specs of that camera. It's a 16 megapixel mirrorless camera that came out in 2013. It's Olympus EM1, but it's a you know interchangeable lens system, basically a DSLR, except it doesn't have mirror. Uh, and I said, okay, so basically he says, yeah, forget the full size sensor. Now the electronics, uh, the level of technology is so high that you can achieve these results um, with pretty much you know any size sensor and he chose this small size sensor because he says you know I'm not like 20 years old I don't want to lug around you know 10 pound uh, uh, camera bodies and he said he just carries two cameras uh, the same stylus EM1 I think uh, and just has one zoom on one like one shorter zoom like 24 to 80 millimeters in 35 millimeter equivalent and then the other one, I think, it's um, something like a long zoom. One is standard zoom, one is long zoom. And he says, with these two zooms, and I think they're both f2.8, so they're both professional. But I looked them up on b &H Photo. They're not that expensive, except that you know when I uh, checked the uh, sharpness and, and the rates of this camera and, the, and these lenses on DxO Mark, uh, the results kind of like disappointed me because <laughs> There was no sharpness. Like according to DxO Mark, you look at this camera with these lens combinations. It's like awful megapixels. You know, like basically the technical uh, evaluation of these cameras were, according to DxO Mark, are awful. But what I saw on the screen, uh, there was like two big projection screens. But then there was one like really sharp. Uh, I think it was an LG. LG, you know, big, very big TV. The colors were amazing. I really loved, you know, the work uh, done by this guy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check out his website, and I suggest you guys, if you love photography, check out uh, pictures by Jack Dickman, jdickman.net. Okay, so the next uh, interesting lecture I want to see. See, they give you this program here. I wasn't interested in any of this. Uh, yeah, five o'clock. They're gonna be beyond the snapshot. I'm interested to see that uh, advanced travel photography by Brenda Tharp, and that's kind of you know. Uh, recently, I I came to the conference that's about basically wildlife and landscapes, but more and more I like kind of like what this guy Jay Dickman has been doing. You know, kind of like newspaper street photography where you have a story in your picture maybe you capture some interesting moment you know some humor and so travel photography uh, I think uh, can be really really you know rewarding I got time till uh, 5 o'clock till that lecture it's 3.21 now I'm going for a walk. I think I'll take uh, 34th Street South to 7th Avenue. We'll do like a circle, so 34th Street, I said, or 32nd South, and then just come back.
34th Street Penn Station. That's where I am. Yes. Port Authority bus terminal and part of the reason for this uh, walk was to find the, the stop for the LaGuardia bus and I found it see over there on the on the post it says JFK LaGuardia Airport so basically you just wait here and you get the ticket for 14 bucks and this is the corner of 48th and 8th Avenue. And last time the bus dropped me off over there on the other side, right? So it doesn't go, the bus doesn't go inside the terminal, so we have to be on the, on the street. Well, I'm back from my little walking tour. So this is the last day. No, actually, tomorrow is going to be the last day. Uh, what's today? Today's Monday, right? Monday? So now I'm already beginning to think about my work. I told my uh, dispatcher that uh, they can start looking for the... Uh, to load me on Wednesday. Uh, I'm a trucker, right? So people watching my channel know. Heavy Hold TV. And I just wanted to conclude this uh, series with uh, some of my personal impressions so if you not if you don't care to hear them please stop the tape as they used to say in the non-digital age and move move along but basically it's a great city if you you know love watching people and especially if you're a photographer if you like I, I went uh, this morning uh, you know just to get coffee and everything of course this is downtown so everything is expensive like I don't know well, the coffee in the restaurant was like three dot three fifty for Americano but that's what you pay you pay for the you know as they say in real estate location 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 so, so I, I tried Starbucks uh, it takes like 30 minutes to get a cup of coffee over there and the next door was a McDonald's and I had some you know hesitations about going in there but I went in the morning and I sat near the window and you just watch people and of course today's being Monday was much busier in the morning and there's people like walking by and it's so interesting you know so many interesting characters and some guy was going on uh, two tables away from me but he was there before I came so it was not directed at me but in general at white people some idiot was offended by my use of the word black when I was describing a, um, a scene of an accident. So this guy sitting there and he's like speaking, you know, some guys like have this voice that carries around for miles and this guy basically almost shouts that uh, the message was that I wish that we live in a society with no white people. So there's a lot of crazy people out here, you know, there's lots of homeless people and I, I watch the roads as a trucker, right, like it's here downtown, the roads are so bad, like there's so many potholes, it's like, and there's always noise, it's either a siren, so something is either burning or somebody is dying, but there's always sirens and taxi cab guys always honk their homes, you know and nobody's paying attention but it's very noisy very stressful so living here uh, I'm telling you I, I wrote in the comment in my previous video that there is a science behind this that they're saying that 
there's a direct relation between the lifespan, like average lifespan of a, of a city dweller and the size of the population. So if you live in a town like this, you're not gonna live here too long, you know? Because it's, it's very stressful, so it basically shortens your life. And not me, that's the science, right? That's just the statistics. It's not just some prediction. So anything under 100,000 people, ideally like 50,000 people, that's where you want to live, you know? Because, yeah, this is... And even the crime, like, even if you have some kind of a na uh, nerves of steel and you can, you can enjoy the daily, you know, gritty life of NYC, but even, like, the crime rate, right? I remember reading somewhere when I was getting ready to immigrate to Canada from Russia about a couple, a Jewish couple from Russia, and they came in the in Russia. Like back then, you know, poor people would not immigrate. Right, you need to have some money to come here. Right, so they would sell all their possessions in there, and probably they had some very good life back in Russia with some, you know, illegal usually um, I'm not just saying about Jewish people but I'm just saying that people that immigrated back in the day usually these were rich people and being rich in a communist country it's not possible by you know through some legal way so usually these people were some in some interesting positions where they could make some you know it's always shady kind of economy right everybody was a, a criminal the way the system worked because you could not survive if you were just following the rules. So anyway, so these guys were the married couple, I think they were like in their 60s, and they come to New York City, and they're so happy that they're finally out of the confines of the communist regime of the USSR, and like, I think first week or the second week, they're walking down the street, and they're mugged, because they had some expensive jewelry, like the wife had some expensive jewelry on. And I think only uh, the husband survived, but the wife was killed. This was like her first, second, first or second week. Uh, and I remember it was New York City. So that's my basically personal in impressions. And I, rem I understand why lots of people, like for example in Russia, I always thought that my idea of uh, kind of like a living you know, uh, model would be to live somewhere near a big city because big city, of course, you know, there's always something going on, you know, lots of entertainment opportunities, you know, movie theaters, and then if you get sick, there's hospitals, right? So, but the city itself, it's too stressful. So I think ideally you want to live somewhere close, you know, like in a suburb, um, like in Russia, like somewhere 30 minutes away from Moscow, you know, that would be great. So the same thing here. That's why a lot of people move over there to the other side of that Hudson River. And that's New Jersey, I believe. So, but all in all, going down there where those flags are. You probably cannot see it with this camera. I'm recording with a GoPro. Down there where the flags are, that's the B&H photo. That's where we had the cocktail party yesterday. Um... One thing I noticed is that cops here are very friendly. Like there was a bunch of, there was like three cops, you know, those uh, just patrol officers standing next uh, outside the McDonald's. And as I was sitting there, I was watching them. And every like five minutes, a pedestrian would come over and ask them what looked like uh, directions. And they were very nice. They didn't wave them off. You know, one guy even like got his cell phone and started looking at the map. Probably he didn't know where it was, but so, you know, very helpful guys, very, very friendly, so. So these were my, like, brief impressions from the trip, but all in all, I, this is the first time I ever spent time here where I can actually walk, you know, and look at things, and this is like Manhattan, you know, kind of like a dream come true, but once again, this is a great uh, place to visit. Uh, as a tourist, it's unbelievable, you know, and I didn't even see uh, Pretty much anything. I didn't go to all these, you know, like regular attractions. I was just staying <laughs> Staying within like 10 minutes of my hotel 
because I didn't want to get lost, you know, and um, or mugged because you know, just in case somebody takes my hundred dollar uh, GoPro camera. But no, I'm just kidding. But you know, in a in a in a unknown city, I usually try to stay like do like a circle and then explore a little bit further, but kind of like follow on a route where I know I will not get lost. And so first day. Yeah, I went to the back to the Port Authority, then the other day I went to the river and back. Right, then I found this B&H, because I did not know it was this close. And now, now I went on another, in another kind of like circle. And that's I think the best way to explore a city, is just on foot, you know, forget all these tourist buses, you know. Like I think it's best to see it from the pavement, from the pavement up. Well, thanks for staying with me these uh, three videos. I hope that you enjoyed them. And 5 o'clock, yeah, I'm going to see the last uh, lecture here about the advanced trail photography with Brenda Tharp. So all in all, it was a very interesting uh, time I spent here with, uh, with the B&H. So thanks to them very much. It was, uh, I'm, I'm very glad I decided to, to come here. Thanks for watching.